Welcome back to our weekly cybersecurity news roundup for the week of October 2nd, 2023, where we dive into cyber headlines that shaped the week to keep you informed and protected. Let's get started. First, the deceptive Zinrat malware. A new piece of malware has been discovered by researchers from Proofpoint, and it's targeting Windows users in a rather sneaky way. This malware, named Zinrat, is impersonating the popular password manager Bitwarden. The attackers have set up a fake website with a domain name strikingly similar to Bitwarden's, which is a tactic known as typo squatting. The malicious domain is bitwaradin.com with an extra I. It's so close that someone may not even notice if they were sent to the wrong URL. Once a Windows user visits this malicious site and attempts to download the software that they think is Bitwarden, they're infected with Zinrat. RAT is usually remote access Trojan, which is what this is talking about here. This malware then establishes a connection with its command and control server, gathering system information and, more alarmingly, stealing passwords. The lesson here? Always ensure you're downloading software from trusted sources, and sometimes it's worth typing in a URL instead of trusting links as a way to double-check where you're being sent. With how easy it is to scrape websites, and especially with how AI can help with these social engineering attacks, we will continue to see these attacks increase. Next up, redefining federal cyber roles, skills over degrees. The House of Representatives has recently passed an encouraging bill titled the Modernizing the Acquisition of Cybersecurity Experts Act of 2023. Spearheaded by Representative Nancy Mace from South Carolina, this legislation aims to shift the focus from formal educational requirements to hands-on skills and experience for federal cyber roles. Why is this significant? Well, it's all about addressing the ongoing shortage of cybersecurity professionals in the federal workforce. By emphasizing real-world experience over degrees, the government is looking to tap into a more diverse talent pool. This includes experts who might not have taken a traditional path, but still possess the skills essential for the job. The bill states that agencies can only set a minimum educational requirement for a cybersecurity position if such an educational qualification is mandated by law in the state or locality where the job duties will be performed. Agencies can consider a candidate's education in determining their qualifications, but only if the education directly relates to the competencies needed for the position. Now that this bill has passed the House, it has been sent over to the Senate, and we'll see what happens there. Next, FDA's Cyber Mandates for Medical Devices. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has rolled out new regulations aimed at bolstering the cybersecurity of medical devices. These rules mandate medical device vendors to establish processes for identifying and mitigating vulnerabilities, create a software bill of materials, and have a plan to address vulnerabilities even after the products are sold. The FDA now has the power to refuse devices that don't meet these cybersecurity requirements. This move comes as the healthcare industry faces a surge in ransomware attacks, emphasizing the critical need for robust cybersecurity measures. Phishing attacks exploited Indeed job platform. Job seekers beware. A recent phishing campaign has been exploited in a vulnerability in the popular job search platform Indeed. Cybersecurity firm Minlo Security has highlighted that attackers are using an open redirection flaw on the Indeed website to redirect users to phishing pages designed to steal their Microsoft credentials. The primary targets were C-suite employees and other executives, mainly in the United States. This campaign underscores the importance of being vigilant and double-checking URLs, especially when they come from trusted sources. And finally, Sony's data breach. If you listened to my roundup last week, you will recall a story about a possible breach at Sony Interactive Entertainment. Well, they have now confirmed a cybersecurity breach that exposed the personal information of thousands. The breach was a result of an unauthorized party exploiting a zero-day vulnerability in the MoveIt transfer platform. We have seen lots of activity with this vulnerability across the world. This vulnerability was leveraged by the notorious CLOP ransomware in large-scale attacks. Sony has since taken measures to address the breach, but it serves as a stark reminder of the importance of patching and updating software to protect against known vulnerabilities. 
And that concludes our look at this week's top cybersecurity stories. As the digital landscape evolves, staying informed is your first line of defense. If you found this roundup helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to be notified about new content.